Hey everyone, welcome back. So, so far we have taken a good look at the auto covariance function. So now we take the next step in this video and look at the auto correlation function. So let's see the definition of the autocorrelation function. I'm sure most of you have an idea of what this is going to look like. So here goes. So the autocorrelation function, now I'm denoting it by rho. This is called as rho. So autocorrelation between your series at time point S and time point C is basically the autocovariance divided by the standard deviations, okay? So uh, just like the uh, correlation, this autocorrelation function also measures the linear dependence of the series at the two time points. So it also, again, it lies between minus one and plus one. So it has similar properties to the correlation. And then if, X, uh, if xt and xs, right, if they have a perfect linear relation, that is, if we can, if this expression is true, then uh, their correlation is going to be one, right? If b is greater than zero, that means there is a positive uh, relation. That means uh, correlation will be plus one. And if B is negative, that is, if this slope is negative, that means there will be a, a decreasing relation between the two. So the autocorrelation function will have a value of minus 1. So plus 1 is perfect positive relation, minus 1 is perfect negative um, relation between the uh, time series at the two time points. So you can uh, think of this roughly as the capacity or the ability to forecast the series at time point T from value at time point s, right? So if they're perfectly, say, positively correlated, then this equation uh, will be roughly true. And then if we know the value of the time series, say, uh, say s is equal to 10, then we can predict the next uh, value of the time series at the next time point. So let's take a look at the autocorrelation function for white noise. So wt is white noise. And if you remember, uh, this is the autocovariance function. So it is a good idea to know the autocovariance of some of the basic structures like the moving average, the autoregressive, and, and uh, definitely the white noise. So this is the autocovariance um, of the white noise. And let's see how to write the autocorrelation now. So again, so rho st, this is a formula uh, so rho st is this auto co uh, covariance divided by the standard deviation. So if t is not equal to s, so this is zero. So therefore the autocorrelation will also be zero. And if t is equal to s, it will be one. So the auto co uh, uh, autocorrelation of white noise is zero if the time points are different and one if the time points are the same. Also, it is always a good idea to plot the autocorrelation function, okay? So I have not done it here, but um, it's pretty easy to plot this. So let's take a look at the autocorrelation function of moving average. So this is a white noise. This is a uh, moving average one. This is the autocovariance. Uh, we have uh, derived this uh, in the previous slides. So um, this should be familiar to all of you. Again, uh, auto, for the autocovariance function, we go by the formula. So first say S and T, if the distance, uh, if the two time points are the same, then the covariance is going to be this, um, divide by, um, so this also is the expression for the variance or the, uh, or the standard deviation. So we have this and it's equal to one. If the distance between the two time points is 1, the numerator is going to be this uh, for the autocovariance. And denominator, remember, denominator is basically the two time points are the same. So denominator is always going to be this first guy. So this is the autocovariance function of the uh, moving average. Oh, and finally zero. So basically you can see that if um, the distance between the time points is zero, then the autocovariance is one, because obviously looking at the correlation of uh, between xt and xt, so that is gonna be one. If the distance between them is one, then this is the autocorrelation, and otherwise it is zero. 
So this is decreasing, right? As the distance increases, the correlation is decreasing. You can see it from here. Again, if you wanted to plot this, uh, you can uh, pick a specific uh, value of A for say A is equal to one. Um, so on the x-axis will be the distance and y-axis will be the autocorrelation function. So if the distance is zero, uh, the y-coordinate is zero. If the x-coordinate is one, that is if the distance is one, then the y-coordinate is one upon two, that's half, right? And then it's zero. So basically on the x-axis, you have this distance or the lag and y-axis is are these values of the auto covariance. Auto covariance for a random walk, sorry, correlation for a random walk. So this is the white noise. Uh, this is the expression for random walk, no drift here. This is the auto covariance. Again, we have derived this before. So for correlation, just plug in the values for um, the auto covariance. So in the numerator, uh, we have this. In the denominator, so denominator is what we're looking at the standard deviation. So gamma SS, so gamma SS is basically minimum of S and S is just S. So we get like S sigma square and T sigma square. So that's what we have here. Um, so this is the expression for the autocorrelation for the random walk. We could simplify this further. So if we assume that, so one of, so we have two time points, one of these has to be smaller than the other. Um, so suppose T is lesser than or equal to S, then minimum of S and T is going to be T, and then things cancel out a bit and you get this neater expression. So always think of uh, re-expressing your equations in simpler fashion, right? This is very much correct. This is a legitimate answer or this is a legitimate expression, but this looks uh, nicer. So here is a practice problem. So we have uh, this white noise from normal distribution. Uh, this is the time series. Okay. Find the mean of yt. Uh, find out the autocovariance function. So to make your job a little bit easier i have given you what the autocovariance should look like and then find the autocorrelation uh, function of yt so acf we are going to reserve this for autocorrelation function so in the next video we shall take a look at the cross covariance and the cross correlation so so far we were looking at the covariance of time series say x at different time points or we were looking at time series y at different time points right so we had covariance bit of um, between yt and ys or covariance between xt and xs what if we have two different time series so I have a time series X, I have a time series Y. What is the covariance between uh, X, uh, T and Y, S, C, right? So, we, so that's the cross covariance. So similarly, uh, you can extend this concept uh, also to cross correlation function. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye.